Hi everybody and welcome. This is the first of several videos for Curriculum Committee co-chairs showing you the SharePoint team space or organization that's been created in the CCB portal for your committee to use. SharePoint organizations offer each Curriculum Committee its own set of discussion boards and document libraries and other features that can be useful to your committee and its work. The tools are all web accessible to all committee members, and as co-chairs, you can also add and modify SharePoint tools to customize your organization space. Today, I'm going to show you how to find your organization space and give you a quick tour of features already available there for you. I'll also show you how to look at your committee rosters. And in a future video, I'll show you how to add people to your membership list or take people off who are no longer members of the committee. Other videos will show you how to create and use different SharePoint tools and resources. And we'll take a look at how the other CCV committees are using their team spaces because that might give you a few ideas. Before we begin, though, I want to point out the VSC Training Center. Here's a place where you'll find more resources about various tools that we share across the VSC system, including the SharePoint portal, which you can access here. The VSC training videos go into a lot more depth and detail than I'm going to, and if you're really interested, you may well want to explore what's, what's in there. But if all you want is a really quick and dirty, how do I get this done? Well you've come to the right place. Before you can access your committee's organization space, you have to be logged into the portal. Then you scroll down to the middle of the page and find the My Organizations tab. If the list of organizations isn't showing, click on Expand All to reveal it. Now your list probably is not as long as mine is, but you should see Academic Council, which you probably visit at least once a month, and your curriculum committee and any other college-wide task forces or working groups or committees that you're a part of. Go ahead and click on the name of your committee. I'm going to use social sciences as an example. The home page in your team site looks a lot like Academic Council's home page. Notice the global navigation across the top. All these buttons lead to resources you probably already know quite well. Notice in particular the CCV Home or Portal button. This will always take you back to the portal home page that you get to when you first log in. Down the center of this page, first you'll see an announcement area. Notes that you post here will be visible at login to members of your organization. There's also an events calendar where you can enter dated reminders for committee members. This is a good place to put deadlines for things like curriculum change process and other projects. Below the events list is a documents library already created for your committee. Here you can store curriculum change documents, course proposals, and other project documents that your committee needs to access. Over on the right is another little library for images and pictures when you want them, and a special box where you can post a list of links for your committee's convenience. Links here can include anything that has a web URL. That could be documents from Harvey or pages on CCV's public website, maybe another site inside the CCV portal, or something just out on the internet. Now let's look at the left-hand column. This is a clickable index to the contents of your organization space, and it'll show up everywhere inside that space. At the very top is a label with your committee's name on it, and this is actually a button, a home button. Always brings you right back here to the front page of your team site. Next, we have a space for discussions. Every committee has a general discussion area already created, and in a future video, I'll show you how to start threads, post messages and replies, and create other discussion boards. There's also a way to subscribe to the discussions by email, and I'll show you how to do that too. Next, the libraries. You can think of these as sort of like file drawers. You can use the default library that's already available to you, or you can create other special purpose libraries. Social Sciences has already done that. See how they've created a document library to hold minutes of their committee meetings? When they created that document library, this button automatically appeared in this index menu. Other buttons on the list take the user to the events list, the announcements list, and the pictures library, and the site links repository that we talked about a minute ago. At the very bottom of your left-hand index is a button labeled People and Groups. This button gives you access to the membership rosters of your committee. There are actually two rosters. The top one here is a list of advisors. Advisors in SharePoint are members with special permission to create new libraries, discussion areas, and other SharePoint features 
within the organization site. And as co-chairs, you're automatically permissioned here as an advisor in your committee space. Also on this short list are the three associate academic deans and Megan Tucker. And we're here to help you troubleshoot if something goes wrong in your site or you want support for trying something new. The other list here is the committee membership list. Open yours up and take a good look. Be sure that all the names here include everybody who should be on the committee. Also notice whether or not anyone appears in this list who's actually stepped off your committee. Next time we'll talk about how to add and remove people from this membership list and also how to use the list to quickly contact everybody on the committee. See you then.